everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. You are watching The Buzz. And I wanted to wish everybody a happy belated Earth Day. And today we are going to dive into an event that took place yesterday afternoon called Tesla's Autonomy Investors Day. And they showcased a lot of their technology. It was a highly technical presentation regarding their new self-driving chip as well as some software and basically some information on how they interpret the data and how all of this turns into a fully autonomous vehicle. So I'm going to go over some of the more important aspects of the video. It was so long and there was so much information coming out of it and it was definitely all good. But for those of you who are not too technical and including myself, it was just whew, it just went over your head, but nonetheless, it was still great information. And I just wanted to share those highlights for you so you don't have to go back and watch three and a half hours of video. Hopefully I will be able to provide some insight and some direction as to what Tesla is doing and where they're going to go with this full self-driving technology that they have. Okay. So let's so dig basically, in. Basically, I'm gonna go over about four different topics, um, all of which play a huge part in the full self-driving aspect of not just a Tesla Model 3, but the S and the X as well. So the first thing we wanna talk about is the chip and this new redundant, highly available self-driving computer is now being produced in all of Tesla's vehicles, including the S, the 3, and the X. Now this just started about 10 days ago in the Model 3 and about a month ago in the S and X. So all vehicles currently being produced by Tesla does have this new chip. So let's dive into this chip so that you guys have a full understanding of what it is, how it works, and all of that good stuff. The chip comprises of two independent, self-driving, redundant computers. It is a very, very small form factor and will be able to be retrofitted into all Tesla vehicles. And that was the key to their design and why it has taken so long for them to get to this point, is they had to make sure that they were able to build something that was capable of full self-driving and all the things that go along with that, but yet be able to be retrofitted to all Tesla vehicles. The full self-driving computers are in an active, active state, meaning that all of the information is being passed through both chips. What they did do though, is they did separate some of the information um, to both computers. Um, so it comes in to each one of them and then passes the information back and forth to one another. So during the presentation, Elon did state that no matter if one side uh, of the redundant chip fails, the car will still be able to drive itself in a fully functional format. So each chip is capable of driving the car in its full capacity. So if you can imagine that, now having a redundant or an active side to that chip to be able to drive as if in a fully functional state. So each chip can operate independently or actively together. There were some technological constraints that Tesla had to work through to build this computer. And one of them was trying to keep this new board under 100 watts of power consumption. They did not want to have to take away from the range of the vehicles and they have achieved that and I believe they are at 72 watts of power consumption for this new board, which is actually phenomenal based on all the information and all the processing that this chip is using and all the data it is analyzing at any given time. So that was a huge accomplishment to Tesla. They were talking about teraops of information, and I don't know if that's related to a gigawatt of information or a, you know, a gigawatt of information or what. So, but all in all, this chip is 21 times faster than a current chip, which is just producing and passing a massive amount of information. Enough about the chip. There is a whole lot of technical information and I'll just go ahead and post some of that down below um, for those of you who want to read it. Um, but it is a very, that, that portion of the presentation was a very highly technical um, presentation with a lot of, um, <laughs> with a lot of information that was well above my head. Um, and I am actually a fairly technical guy. Um, but some of this information, when you get down into building uh, processors and chips and, and boards, um, it gets actually very, very highly technical. Remarkable what they, they were able to accomplish in building this new chipset for the full self-driving capabilities. Elon stated that they would design and build the best chip in the world. And not only is he saying that, but he's saying it that this was accomplished by a huge 
margin. These are world-class engineers who are designing and building this chip. And I think that Tesla has something that others may want um, for future. So maybe Tesla is using this as a, a mechanism for additional income down the road if they decide that they wanna sell their full self-driving capabilities to other manufacturers. So that's something to watch out for um, down the road. If you have an opinion, please comment down below and let me know your thoughts on what you think about this new chip and Tesla's future as it relates to sharing their self-driving technology. Okay, so for the second topic, we are talking about the neural network. Everything that the vehicle sees and interprets into the vehicle to help make the decisions for the full self-driving um, to work correctly. And this is actually even happening on um, just standard uh, autopilot and of course on Navigate on autopilot as well. So let me just go through what the vehicle actually has on board as far as its capabilities and then we'll continue on through the neural network discussion. So the car has eight cameras, 12 ultrasonic sensors, one GPS and one forward facing radar, all of which are actively accumulating data and information and passing it on through neural network to interact with the world around us. And essentially, what Tesla is saying is that in order for this neural network to work um, efficiently and effectively, you need three things, large data, varied data, and real data. And how does Tesla accomplish this? Through the fleet. It is just amazing the amount of information that has been gathered over the course of Tesla's existence um, to help feed the neural network all of the information that you and I as drivers each and every day are passing along to them. So basically, they are getting free data from us, putting into their neural network to teach the cars how to interact better with the surroundings that we are driving in each and every day, which is just an amazing accomplishment how they are able to pull in this data parse it out to the varying attributes that they want to concentrate on that need to have more definition or more refinement to make full self-driving and just autopilot driving better and better each and every day. And by, by being part of the Tesla fleet, um, you know, they did say that all information that they gather um, is completely anonymous and they are not tracking that um, from that perspective. But what they do do is they go out and they ask for certain bits of information from the Tesla fleet and the Tesla fleet is able to respond and uh, with that query and basically present that data back to Tesla for further examination and of course to better um, the capabilities of autopilot, navigate on autopilot and what will be the future of full self-driving technology. This segment of uh, the presentation was absolutely intriguing. That part you may wanna go watch. I'll go ahead and put down below um, the timestamp on, on Tesla's video so that you can go back and watch it if you so feel you need to. Okay, so let's talk about shadow mode. What shadow mode is, is basically a virtual car that is driving on top of ours that, uh, that is seeing all the same surroundings that we are seeing, but what it's doing is predicting on a certain event what that what the shadow would do. Not necessarily what you're doing, but it, it, it allows the shadow to go ahead and sort of drive in your environment and make predictions based on what they see. And then Tesla takes back that information, they make changes to the software, and then sends that information back out to the fleet. So the shadow mode is running on every car and every vehicle, and it's constantly gathering data and looking at the surroundings. And, and you know, when it, when it mispredicts um, an event, you know, Tesla gets that information back and they're able to actually correct it, which is absolutely phenomenal. And again, it is using the eight cameras, the 12 sensors, the one GPS and the one forward facing um, radar to gather all of this information. Um, it's just amazing how much information Tesla is gathering for free, but there is some back end work that they have to do to be able to figure out exactly what's going on. And then of course, correct that information, send it back out to the fleet so the car becomes smarter and smarter as they get more information. And basically what they are saying is the, vis the visual representation or recognition is necessary for autonomous driving, meaning that we see everything um, visually, right? Stop signs, stop lights, um, somebody walking in front of us or somebody on the side of the road. And basically that's how Tesla 
sees the world um, through autonomous driving, whether it's navigate, navigating on a pilot or full self-driving, it is not relying on other technologies such as LiDAR, um, which Elon did put to shame. He said, LiDAR is basically garbage. Um, it will not be around for very long, mark my words. So obviously Tesla is on to something and it completely makes sense from a theoretical perspective that of course, everything that we are seeing around us is obviously visual to us. And that's how they want the Tesla fleet to be able to see everything as well, visually. So they do this by gathering massive amounts of information and data um, and you know, putting that through the neural network and making representation and teaching the neural network on what all these, these surroundings are. And the more information they get, the better off it'll be and the more precise the neural network will be and therefore the more precise autopilot, navigate on autopilot and full self-driving will become. Okay, so for the final and one of the probably more important aspects, uh, well, I believe one of the more important aspects of um, the Tesla autonomy event is the master plan and what that looks like. And you can clearly see that Elon has made some very, very bold statements over the years and clearly admitted that he doesn't always um, follow through from a time perspective, meaning he doesn't bring everything in on time as he states he, he, he would like to. But nonetheless, there are some very, very um, great accomplishments on this list. And if you look at 2019 and 2020, um, Elon is basically saying that he will have a fully autonomous robo taxi by the year 2020. And he also stated along with that, that it won't be available in every region or jurisdiction um, that will be based on regulation. But he is basically saying that, hey, we are here now. We are at the forefront of full self-driving technology. We have our chipset, we have our neural network, we have the data um, from the, um, the fleet of Tesla vehicles. We have every bit of information that we need to be able to compile a uh, fully autonomous vehicle with hardware and software capabilities that are far above and beyond anything that anybody else um, is even coming close to. And he went on to say about how important <laughs> this robo taxi is going to be not just for Tesla, but for us as Tesla owners in general, that we will actually be able to place our cars inside of this ride sharing environment that Tesla is going to create. So while I'm at work, I can go ahead and send my Model 3 off and people can go ahead and just call, uh, call up the car on an app. They can go um, pick them up and take them wherever they are and um, earn some additional money. And what they're saying is about $30,000 per year. I don't know what that is based off of as far as how many hours and everything um, that you would need to drive to earn that kind of money. But nonetheless, um, Elon is basically saying that this is all going to happen in 2020. So only thing I would say is watch out Uber and watch out Lyft. Um, Tesla has an aggressive plan to become a fully autonomous ride sharing company. Um, so if you look back at where Tesla has begun and where they are now, I just wonder, you know, sort of what was their master plan uh, from the onset? Was it really to sell a mass market um, luxury sedan is at the top of the industry currently, or was that just a, um, a bump in the road for them to get to where they really wanted to go, and that was full self-driving and autonomy so that they can have the largest ride-sharing um, <laughs> company in the world, essentially, um, because they are. They are world worldwide, and of course, it's going to take um, time for fully um, autonomous driving to be regulated everywhere across the world, but nonetheless, if they can make this happen and if they can get people to buy into this, they actually do have a very sustainable um, growth plan, not just from a car manufacturing perspective, but from added business into this venture. So if you look at their whole umbrella of everything that they have, they are a very diversified company going in many different ways. So they're not just a car manufacturer, they are also a software and hardware developer now as well, because they have their own chip, and their own software to run it, which is very, very cool. I give uh, Tesla kudos for everything that they've been doing. It is just 
unbelievable how they were able to capture this market that they're in currently and just continue to build on it. They have a, a huge uh, support group um, with all of us Tesla owners that are, are backing them, not just with the, the, uh, the early on Roadster, the S, the X, the 3, it'll be the Y, it'll be the pickup truck and any other venture that they decide to go into. Very, very cool information. One other tidbit is that um, Elon also stated that now with the new leasing program available, at the end of your lease agreement, you will not have an option to buy the car. Tesla will return that back to the fleet and go ahead and send those vehicles out for um, robo-taxi or full autonomy ride-sharing capabilities. The other thing I did want to note, and I think that this is huge, Elon made a very, very bold statement about the longevity of the Model 3s currently being built, which are sustainable, to his point, for 1 million miles of driving vehicle itself, the, the motors and all of that, except for currently the battery packs, they are only gonna have a shelf life of about three to 500,000 miles. By next year, 2020, all the Model 3s that will be produced, because this is going to be their ride-sharing car, right? This is the robo-taxi, it's not the S and it's not the X. Although they can be part of the fleet um, portion of ride-sharing, but it will not be Tesla's robo-taxi or, or ride-sharing vehicle. So what he stated is that the entire vehicle will have a 1 million mile lifespan, the battery pack and the motors. That is phenomenal. So if you think about that, and of course, you know, we're talking base model too. So if it were me and if I was gonna go ahead and, and embark in this ride sharing endeavor with Tesla, I'm not buying a, a all wheel drive, long range performance model three. No, I'm buying the base model, bare minimum, um, because I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be done in the city, right? We're going to be driving, you know, people around in the city. We're not going to be in, in very rural areas. So I'm going to get a the base model, Tesla Model 3, which is going to be around what he's thinking, $38,000. And that car is going to last me 1 million miles. So if you did that full time, you can imagine you're going to be making your money back on the vehicle. And Elon also did state that the Model 3 is a, is a, a buy that you just can't beat. So it's going to be very interesting to see what that battery pack change is in 2020. So yeah, so that about sums it up, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. I would love to hear your comments and interaction down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the, the whole gamut of everything Tesla is offering right now from the hardware, the software, the robo taxi, the ride sharing. What are your comments? What are your thoughts? What do you feel about driving in a driverless car because that's another thing that Elon said he goes uh, sooner than later we're just going to be pulling off the steering wheel the the accelerator and the brake will be coming out of the vehicle um, once they get more regulation and once autonomy get becomes uh, better and better and I, and I think that that will actually happen but what are your thoughts would you jump in a driverless car to give get you from point A to point B yeah I'm not sure I would I guess time will tell, but let me know what your thoughts are and how comfortable you would feel with doing that. Of course, you know, everybody has a different opinion and that's what's great about this community. So yeah, so let me know what your thoughts are and please folks, don't forget as you watch the end of this video, if you haven't already, please click the subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for tuning in. We truly appreciate it. Have a great night.